Okay, number one, identify a pair of same side interior angles in the figure. Um, it says same side, so it's talking about the same side of the transversal. So there's your transversal. So two, three, six, and seven are all on the right. One, four, five, and eight are all on the left. And then it says interior. That implies inside the two, two lines. So they're not parallel lines this time, but they're just two just general lines being intersected by a transversal. So three and six are interior angles on the same side of the transversal, four and five also. So either angle three and angle six or angle four and angle five. You don't need to give both answers, just one or the other. That's the one I'd go with, first one I wrote down. Um, on the test, it could ask for corresponding angles, alternate interior, alternate exterior. So basically, uh, know the structure of each of those um, possibilities. Number two, find the measure of angle one. What theorem or postulate justifies your answer? As you can see on this problem, the lines are marked as parallel. And um, we can see that angle one and angle 131 degrees here, if we have the same starting position, we're going right and down right and down to get to these, they correspond, their corresponding angles. Um, there is a corresponding angle theorem. Which states, if two lines are parallel, then their corresponding angles are congruent. And as we've already discussed quite often, congruent angles have equal measures. So um, since these are corresponding angles, I know that measure of angle one has to equal measure of angle 131. So measure of angle 1 equals 131 degrees is the answer to the question. Find the measure of the angle. And what theorem or postulate justifies your answer? That would be the corresponding angles theorem. And be careful with these theorems that you name them correctly. Um, you get to use your theorem and postulate sheet so that that name should be on the sheet already. But this says lines have to be parallel. As you can see, the lines are parallel. We're allowed to make the conclusion that the corresponding angles are congruent, therefore equal measure. Um, on the test, you can expect some pair of angles either corresponding, alternate interior, alternate exterior, or same side interior angles to allow you to create some equation to figure out the missing angle measure. Number three, find the measures of x and y in the following figure. Now this has been challenging for several people that have come talk to me about it, so I just want to walk you through it real quick. First thing you want to do is make two good equations based on facts and the problem. So once again, we have parallel lines cut by transversal. So once again, I have corresponding angles, alternate interior, alternate exterior, that kind of stuff. Um, what I'm noticing here is that this angle up here is a corresponding angle to this angle down here. So I know those two angles have to be equal to each other. So I'll write that out, 3x plus 2y is equal to 6x. A good equation with x's and y's in it has one of each, and everything equals zero is a good structure to have. So if I created that equation based on that fact, the corresponding angles there, I would move the 6x over to the left, subtract, subtracting 6x from both sides. So subtracting 6x here cancels it, leaving us with zero on the right-hand side. Subtracting 6x here gives me negative 3x plus 2y. The other thing I notice on this one specifically these highlights here, is that 6x and 2y form a straight line. And when two angles form a straight line, they're a linear pair. They're going to be supplementary. They add up to 180. So I know that 6x plus 2y is equal to 180. And as you can see here, I've created two equations, both containing x and y, so it's a system of equations. Uh, I know the freshman last year didn't get enough probably practice on this to know how to do it as well as some of the sophomores and juniors in class. So um, Mrs. Black and I discussed this problem and we've decided that we're going to make it so that one of the equations is just going to have an X or Y in it. So let's just pretend that there's another piece of information here. Let's say that maybe this is 120 degrees. 
Maybe you get that type of information. So I could also say this is a vertical angle to that. So I know that 6x equals 120. Okay, so you might, you'll get something else like that, where you can make just a real simple one variable equation like this one. And if 6x equals 120, divide both sides by 6, it gives me x equals 20. Once I know that x equals 20, I can go back to either one of these two equations, replacing x with the number 20. I'm going to take the top equation. Negative 3x plus 2y equals 0 is what we have. But instead of writing x, I'm going to write 20, because that's what x equals. So negative 60 plus 2y is equal to 0. Move the 60 over, changing its sign to its opposite. So 2y is left on the left-hand side. 0 plus 60 is 60. We divide both sides by 2. We get y is equal to 30. So um, knowing the test, it's going to be pretty much like this, where you're going to get another angle that you can compare to one of these two things if it's like that. But you, you'll be able to get a single letter object equals a single number. You can solve that simply to get an answer and do a quick substitution in one of the other equations you make to get the other answer. <clears throat> uh, numbers 4, 5, and 6 involve um, the converses to the same side interior postulate, the corresponding angles theorem, the alternate interior angles theorem, and the alternate exterior angles theorem. Uh, so what you want to do is identify specifically what type of angles you're given in the picture. These lines aren't parallel yet. We are supposed to determine what has to be true about these angles in order to make the conclusion that those lines are parallel. Okay? And the converse of the alternate exterior angles theorem states if two lines are intersected by a transversal, so that their alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So you'll notice in this theorem that in order to make the conclusion that the lines are parallel, which is what they're asking us to do, what has to be true for these to be parallel in order to make this conclusion? What has to be true is that the alternate exterior angles are congruent. The reason I went with that is because that's what these are, is alternate exterior angles. So in order to, to verify, to conclude that these lines are parallel, angle 1 would have to be congruent to angle 2, because that's what it specifically states. They have to be congruent, so I state they're congruent. And what's the theorem or posture that justifies it? We write down the name of the theorem. You don't have to write down all the words, but I just wanted those words to be there so you could read them. But again, your postulate theorem sheet is going to be available to you. It's not good enough to say the alternate exterior angle theorem. It has to be the converse, because the converse states, if this is true, we can conclude parallel. The alternate exterior angle starts off with parallel lines, which we don't have in this case. So be careful that you identify the difference between the original theorem and then the converses of those theorems. Use the right one. Uh, number five, same basic question type as the last one. This time, if I identify this angle one and angle two, this time are same side interior angles. And the same side converse of the same side interior angles postulate. States, if two lines are cut by a transversal, if two lines are intersected, actually is what they say instead of cut, intersected by a transversal, 
so that the same side interior angles are supplementary, then the lines are parallel. Once again, we're trying to conclude parallel lines. We want to make this conclusion, lines are parallel. In order for that to happen, we have to make sure that the same side interior angles are supplementary. So I simply state what has to be true of angles one and two. Angle one and angle two are supplementary. Why? Which theorem postulate? The converse of the same side interior angles postulate. Again, let's circle that better. Again, you don't have to write all the words of the postulate. Just know it's the converse of the same side. It's not good enough to say the same side interior angles postulate. It has to be the converse of because, again, two lines are intersected by a transversal. These are supplementary. Then the lines are parallel. All right? So, again, just take a look at what the words say have to happen, and you simply make that happen and say that's the reason why. <clears throat> Uh, finally, number six also has to do with the converse. It's not asking you to list the, the reason this time, but um, if you recognize, once again, what type of angles these are. We have two lines cut by a transversal. 3x plus 7 and 4x minus 28 are both to the left and down, so they correspond to one another, the corresponding angles. Um, in order for these lines to be parallel, the corresponding angles must be congruent. So I know if they're congruent, that means that their measures, 3x plus 7 and 4x minus 28, must be equal to each other. So we will create an equation based on the congruence of the two angles having to have equal measures. I would subtract 3x from both sides, so minus 3x minus 3x. On this side, the minus 3x cancels it. On this side, just get minus 3x. I do plus 28 plus 28 plus 28 cancels there. Moves over here. 7 plus 28 is 35. 4x minus 3x is x, and since there's no number in front of the x, it's already done at that point. x equals 35. Uh, there might be a number in front of the x on the test. Just make sure if you get like 5x equals 35, you've got to divide by 5 at that point. In this case, you just get x equals 35. That's the answer. It does ask what value of x, and that's what we found. If it said what are the angle measures, we'd have to go back and substitute x in to figure it out. It doesn't do that. Um, it won't do that on the test either, but just know at some point in the book they might start doing that kind of thing. The triangle angle sum theorem states that the three angles inside a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees, so we can see that we know two of the three angles. So I can make the true equation off this one, that x plus 58 plus 71 is equal to 180. And if I just do some good algebra here, first I add the like terms, 58 plus 71 is equal to 129. And if x plus 129 equals 180, we simply subtract the 129 from both sides. Minus 20, 129 on this side goes away. Minus 129 on this side is what the consequence is. And 180 minus 29 is equal to 51. And once again, x equals, you're already at the point you need to be. Number eight, find the measure of angle x. Now, there's a couple ways of doing this. One way is to figure out the measure of this angle by the fact this is a straight line. The simpler way is we have an exterior angle of the triangle. It's going to equal the sum of the two remote interior angles. That's a plus sign there. So it's x plus 57 must equal 103. Exterior angle equals the sum of the remote interior angles. So then I simply move the 57 over. It's plus 57, so minus 57, minus 57. The minus 57 here gets rid of the 57, leaving x. 103 minus 57 is equal to 46. Okay, for number nine, they want a paragraph proof. On the test, I simply ask for a proof. So you can do a paragraph proof, you can do a two-column proof. The, the same statements of reasons have to be there in order to be correct proof. But, um, <clears throat> It tells us we start off with a triangle ABC, so I would start off by sketching a triangle, like so. A 
And it wants us to prove that angles 1, 2, and 3 equal 180, that triangle angle sum theorem. So the three angles of the triangle, in this case 1, 2, and 3, I'm going to put them there, have to equal 180. Okay. Um, this proof in particular requires an extra line to be drawn. In the book, we called it DE when we did this, this proof. So um, if we just call that DE, just to be able to describe it. And I'd probably stick a couple extra angle numbers in there so I can refer to them as angle 4 and angle 5 instead of angle D, B, A, and angle E, B, C. It's just easier to write. <clears throat> okay. So that's what my picture would look like. And obviously, I was not given that extra line DE. I made it happen. Shrink it up a little bit so I have more room to write. So if I was to do this proof, my step one paragraph proof would be we are given triangle ABC. The very first thing I did at that point was I drew in uh, line DE parallel to AC. And specifically, I needed to be parallel to AC. So um, draw line DE parallel to segment AC by, can't remember the theorem number, it's the one that states that um, through any point not on a line, there's exactly one parallel line through that point. Maybe it's theorem 210, possibly. Uh, let's just pretend that that's what it is, theorem 210. It didn't have a special name, so theorem something, but just knows for that theorem that I'm doing that. Um, on the test, obviously, you have your theorem postulate sheet, so you'd be able to get the exact theorem number there. Um, at this point, then, I want to prove an equation, something equals 180. So I'm looking at this picture to ask myself, does anything in this picture equal 180? And I can see that those three angles form this one straight line. So therefore, 2, 4, uh, two, four and 5 make 180, right? So um, we can go with 5. I'm trying to think of a good word here to make a good sentence. Um, because angle 4, angle 2, and angle 5 form a straight line. Measure of angle 4 plus measure of angle 2 plus measure of angle 5 equals 180 degrees. That has me an equation that looks very much like what I'm trying to prove, but doesn't have the exact components that I need to have in it. So then, the next thing I need to do is, is figure out what's missing. So angle 2 is already there. 1 and 3 are missing. So I'm looking at 1 and 3 versus 4 and 5. And if I extend this a little bit further so we can kind of see the parallel line going on here. Angle 1 and angle 4 are alternate interior angles. Angle 5 and angle 3 are also alternate interior angles. So by the alternate interior angles theorem, angle one is congruent to angle four, and angle three is congruent to angle five. Again, the theorem states congruence doesn't state equality. So the parallel lines kept by transversal alternate interior angles are congruent. That's the theorem I'm using. But once we get congruent angles, we know the angles have equal measure by the definition of congruent angles. So by the definition of congruent angles, measure of angle 1 must equal the measure of angle 4 and the measure of angle 3 must equal the measure of angle 5. At that point, since 1 equals 4 and 3 equals 5, I can replace 4 and 5 with 1 and 3, making exactly what I'm looking for, just a substitution for the last step. So my final step of the proof is going to be using substitution. Measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 plus measure of angle 3 equals 180 degrees.
And once you've stated what it is you're trying to prove, your proof's over. So that's the end of that. Number 10. On 10, I'm going to give you either parallel looking lines or perpendicular looking lines, not both. But it's going to specifically ask you to find the slope of each line and then determine whether they're perpendicular or parallel. So um, in order to find slope, I need two points. I have three specific lines here. Uh, let me look at line M. I first of all identify two points on line M. So if I'm looking at line M, I can see very clearly that if I go 3 left and 3 up, I get to a point. So negative 3 comma 3 is one coordinate. And if I go 0 left and right and 1 down, so that would be 0, negative 1. That's the second point. So just like that, I've gotten two points on line M. My slope formula that I'm going to use every single, every single one of these is the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'm going to identify a point 1 and a point 2. It really doesn't matter which one's which. And we're going to apply the formula. So the slope of line M, M for slope, subscript M for line M, y2 is negative 1 minus y1 is positive 3, x2 is, positive, is 0, and then minus x1 is negative 3. The formula says minus, so I subtract every time. If I get a minus negative, I'm going to do plus positive. Then I just work it out. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. 0 plus 3 is positive 3. The slope of line M is negative 4 thirds. I look at line N. Once again, I have to pick points on line N. So that's a point. That's a point. The points will be very clearly marked like that, so it won't be hard to identify. This point here is 1 right and 2 up, so that's positive 1 for x, positive 2 for y. And this point here is 4 right and 2 down, that's positive 4 for x and negative 2 for y. I'm going to identify this as point 1, this is point 2. I'm going to apply the slope formula, so the slope of line n is equal to y2, which is negative 2, minus y1, positive 2 and x2 on the bottom minus x1, 4 minus 1. On top, negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. 4 minus 1 is positive 3. And finally, if you look at line k, this point's on line k, this point's on line k. So I got 0, negative 1, and 4, comma 2. I'm going to call this point 1, call this point 2. So the slope of line K is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Once again, always subtraction, y minus y, x minus x. Once again, just like the very first one, I got minus minus, which is plus plus. On top, 2 plus 1 is 3. 4 minus 0 is 4, so 3 fourths the slope of K. So, are lines M and N parallel? Line M and line N have equal slope. So M is parallel to N. Are lines K and N the perpendicular? Line K and line N. These slopes are opposites, reciprocals. In this case, they're both parallel, M and N are parallel, and K and N are perpendicular. On the test, it's going to be one or the other, and again, it's up to you to, it's up to, you to find every slope and then establish whether or not the lines are perpendicular or parallel, whatever they're asking you.